Hello friends, this video on separation of substances part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next process that we will talk about is winnowing. So in winnowing we will see that we are able to separate particles which are of similar sizes but they have difference in their density that is one is heavier and the other one is lighter so when you have two types of com components which may be size wise and texture wise they might appear to be little similar but weight wise one is heavy the other one is light so these kind of materials can be very well separated by winnowing so let's think of the example of sand so let's say you have sand and within that sand so sand particles i'm sure you know that how big the sand particles are and let's say within that sand you have some dry leaves powdered dry leaves or crushed dry leaves which is mixed with this sand so if i ask you to separate the sand and the powdered dry leaves how will you separate because size wise both of them are similar now hand picking is not possible because they are like very tiny things you just cannot keep picking them all so that's not the right option the second option that is threshing that will also not work because even if you beat them like nothing will happen so basically in that case also they will not get separated but when you compare the two that is uh, the sand particles on one hand so that is one component of this mixture and the other component is the dry powdered leaves so when you compare these two you would see that the sand particles are heavier and these dry leaves are definitely lighter so this is something where the two differ so one is heavy the other one is light so this is where winnowing helps so let's see what do we do in winnowing so here uh, we try to separate the heavy and the light particles with the help of wind so presence of wind is a must for winnowing to happen so let's see how we do this so a place where we can commonly use winnowing is to separate the grains from the husks so have, I, I was talking in the previous slide right so you have stalks on and on that stalks you have multiple grains but the grains they have their covering so this is how the covering of the grains look like now if you compare the size of the grain and the covering of their grains obviously size wise they are almost similar but when you look at their weight you will see that the grains are a lot heavier and these husks are a lot lighter so these are called these uh, dry coverings of seeds uh, this is also known as chaff. So this is called chaff. So winnowing is very commonly used to separate chaff from the grains. So these are the grains and we are interested in these grains. So separation of grain seeds from chaff, there we need winnowing because uh, size wise they are similar but one is heavier and the other one is lighter so let's see how do we make you use of wind to separate the grain seeds from chaff so let's have a look so this is how the process of winnowing happens this is also a manual process where uh, people take uh, uh, a container and in that container like this a plate kind of a thing where they put the mixture of the grain seeds and the shaft and then what they do they just move it like this as you can see in the picture so they move it like this and what happens is as the wind blows now the shaft is lighter so this is the shaft so the shaft being lighter it gets carried away by the wind now anything which is light will get very easily blown away with the wind so if you leave a piece of paper and you switch on the fan inside your room, what happens? The paper tends to fly because the paper is very light. But if you keep your mobile phone and switch on the fan, will your mobile phone fly? No, because it, it is heavier. So similarly, in this case also, the shaft is very light. It is just the outer covering, correct? So it doesn't have any weight. So as the wind blows, so the shaft get carried away with the wind. But what happens to the grains now the grains being heavier they fall back so here you see the grains so these are the grains now as a result what happens all the grains get collected in this area and all the shaft get collected in a separate area so that's how you are able to separate the two so this is also a manual process however i mean you do not have machines so yeah it, it is 
a process where human uh, effort is needed it is a time consuming process but then it is a very effective process to separate particles uh, where one particle is heavier and the other particle is lighter so this is very very important so again in this case also if you want to reduce the uh, human labor in that case this can also be substituted with the combined harvester machine so combined harvester is a uh, multifunctional automated machine so it, it does harvesting it does threshing it does uh, it can actually separate the grains from the chaff as well so it separates the grains from the stalks it also separates the grain seeds from the chaff so all these things can be done within that combined harvester machine so if you want to overcome this manual effort so you can make use of combined harvester right so this is how we do winnowing so with this i think you would have got an idea that we have learned about three processes so far first one was hand picking which is only suitable when you have bigger particles to be separated and when you have less number of particles to be separated the second process was threshing which is exclusively used to separate grains from the stalks which are like very much dissimilar in their structure appearance size etc the third process is winnowing which is used to separate particles uh, which are like one of them is heavier the other one is lighter so based on their weight it decides whether one will get carried away with the wind and the other one being heavier will fall back so that's the process of winnowing so you see every process has a certain criteria so every process fits in a uh, certain situation so there and that is why you have so many separation techniques so depending upon the situation you can make use of that specific separation technique now one interesting question that might come to your mind that okay we have been talking about separating the grains from the stalks separating the grains from the chaff now why do we want to separate the grains from all of these now if we can eat grains why can't we eat the chaff why can't we eat the stalks now the simple reason is that grains the rice which we eat that is digestible by human beings but when you talk about the chaff that is these dry coverings of the seeds they are indigestible by humans and that is the reason they need to be removed so if even if you eat it it will not get digested by your body and if it is not digested by your body it it is of no use to your body because it is not going to provide any energy to your body because why do we eat food because food gives us energy so that energy will come out of your food only when the food is properly digested inside your body but chaff is indigestible by human beings so chaff is indigestible by humans and that is the reason we remove chaff from the grain seeds or I mean, we separate chaff and the grain seeds thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.